Welcome back to Global TV Adverts. The channel that brings the latest news and gist from around the world. Please kindly subscribe and hit that notification bell to notify you anytime we upload latest news and gist for you. Gerard Hallier has died at the age of 73, he may just have been destined to manage his beloved Liverpool football club. Gerard Paul Francis Hallier OBE was a French football manager and player. Clubs he managed include Paris Saint-Germain, Lens, and Liverpool, where he won the FA Cup, League Cup, FA Charity Shield, UEFA Cup, and UEFA Super Cup in 2001. Hallier came to Anfield on a joint management ticket with Roy Evans on July 16, 1998, but the seeds of his arrival were sown 30 years earlier when he stood on the cop watching Bill Shankly's great Liverpool side while teaching French at the nearby Alsop Comprehensive School. He deserves to be remembered as the man who had the strength of character and talent to revolutionise Liverpool, making them successful once more when he took sole control after the inevitably unworkable arranged marriage with Evans came to an end four months later. Hallier's arrival at Liverpool was the brainchild of the great Anfield administrator and chief executive Peter Robinson, through a friendship established over many years. Robinson immediately thought of Hallier when it was decided to revamp the club's coaching structure. The man known to all at Enfield as PBR admitted he was on a fishing expedition when he contacted Hallier, who had been heavily linked with Celtic and Sheffield Wednesday after working with France's World Cup winning team in 1998. He rang, ostensibly to congratulate him on a job he had not even taken, while insisting it would be a mistake to consider moving anywhere other than Enfield. Hallier, not realizing such a vacancy existed, jumped at the opportunity and it is not stretching the point to say he subsequently worked a brilliant transformation from the flaky Spice Boys era into the development of a fiercely disciplined, winning team. He said I would pass fortunate enough to be the first journalist to meet Hallier after his arrival at Enfield and it was the start of a personal friendship that revealed him to be not only a perfectionist and driven football obsessive but also a warm, generous, thoroughly decent man. Robinson rang the Liverpool Echo offices that morning in July 1998 and said, There is someone in my office I think you might like to meet. No hints were given but when Robinson issued the summons you acted and after a short drive to Anfield the office door opened to reveal a beaming, clearly overjoyed Gerard Hallier. He was Liverpool's new joint manager and poured out his emotion at coming to Liverpool before saying, I must go now. I want to get to Melwood to meet my new family and that is how he treated Liverpool Football Club. It was his family. He defended it passionately and wanted the best for it at all times. As this is a very personal recollection, there are many stories that confirm his humour and all-consuming desire to be a winner at Liverpool, something which eventually took its toll on his health. Shortly after his arrival, the Liverpool Echo was running a somewhat heavy-handed promotional campaign which involved plastering large images of journalists on the back of buses, with inevitable consequences and insults. Hallier formed what might be termed a two-man transfer committee with his ally Robinson which resulted in discussions that regularly went into the early hours. Officials from other clubs were often startled to receive calls at midnight and beyond inquiring about players. The decision had been taken on a signing and the manager, along with one of the finest administrators the game has known, wanted the ball to start rolling. In came Sammy Hypia, Stefan Henkaz, and Dietmar Hammond, to be followed later by superb acquisitions such as Marcus Babel and Gary McAllister. Hallier was also instrumental in injecting even more professionalism and focus into the veins of outstanding youngsters such as Jamie Caracker, Steven Gerrard, and Michael Owen. If anyone doubts the influence Hallier had on Liverpool when he was there and also afterwards, just ask those iconic figures how highly they regarded him. It took some time to get it right and there were occasions when his 24-7 approach to Liverpool reared its head. When Liverpool drew at Manchester United in March 2000, Hallier had agonised over replacing the injured Hypia moments before halftime with Liverpool leading. He waited, Manchester United equalised and the game ended 1-1. The phone rang at my flat at 7am the following morning and I heard my future wife Lynn, who Hallier knew to be a fanatical Liverpool fan involved in a lengthy discussion about the non-substitution and its implications. Mistakenly assuming it to be a family member, it was a shock to hear the caller was Hallier who had been up all night at Melwood fretting over what he regarded as a poor decision that had cost Liverpool a landmark win. 
He wanted the fans' perspective as well as the journalists, as befitted a man who chose to live in the Sefton Park area of the city as he wanted to be in among supporters so he could see and hear what they felt. League with Aston Villa in 2010 it was, however, his time and successes at Liverpool for which he will be best remembered. The passing years have seen Hollier get the greater credit he merits for work that stretched way beyond silverware to actually changing a culture. Hollier was still seen at Enfield, often on European nights. The respect and affection in which he was held still obvious, the bear hug greeting still as warm and friendly. Gerard Hollier was an outstanding manager and will be very sadly missed. Thank you for watching. If you will like more latest news, updates, and trending gist, don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell so that you get notifications anytime we post new videos. Also remember to like, share and leave a comment on this issue. Thank you.